Now it's time to load a project into your CarveWrite machine. Remove your memory card from the programmer and take it to your CarveWrite machine. Before the CarveWrite can function, the CarveWrite memory card must be installed into the memory card slot on the keypad side of the machine. With the power off, push the memory card gently into the memory card slot until it stops, making sure the label is up. Do not force the memory card into the memory card slot. Once the CarveWrite memory card is installed, the machine can be turned on with the power switch. Look at the LCD display and rotate the contrast control knob until the display is readable from a comfortable angle. Never remove the memory card from the machine while it is on. Irreparable damage can occur to the machine. To stop a project that is being carved, you may at any time press the stop button or lift the safety cover. This will command the machine to stop all motion. Pressing the stop button a second time will abort the project, so be careful when stopping the machine's operation. If desired, the machine can be restarted by closing the safety cover and pressing the enter button. The machine will resume carving at the position where it was stopped even if you have moved the cutting spindle to a different location. Never crank up the head or remove a workpiece in the middle of a project. This will abort the project automatically. Also, never remove a bit in the middle of the project, as this will affect the carving quality. Using the keypad and LCD panel. The main purpose of the carve right is to carve and cut intricate patterns and designs created through the CarveWrite Designer software. There are other built-in woodworking functions on board the machine as well. To learn how each of these functions is accomplished, please refer to the owner's manual. Once the machine is powered up, the LCD will automatically display the project menu. Use the up-down arrows to locate the project you wish to carve and press Enter. Once your project is selected, you can load a properly prepared workpiece into your carve right. Proper Preparation of a Workpiece The carve right has a board tracking sensor that accurately measures and calculates the workpiece's position at all times. It is located at the squaring plate and will require at least 3 8 inches of flat and level surface along the bottom edge of the workpiece. A workpiece with an existing feature, such as previous carvings, knots, holes, splits, paint, or rounded edges, may cause the machine sensors to incorrectly measure the workpiece. The workpiece must also be flat and straight. Check the workpiece for cupping, bowing, crooking, and twisting. Make sure that the top and bottom of your medium is smoothly planed. Ensure that the width is equal from end to end and that your sides have a good 90 degree edge. Any board that does not meet this criterion will either need to be replaced or placed in a special jig before carving. The minimum acceptable size of a workpiece that can be inserted into the carve right is 1.5 inches wide by 0.5 inches thick by 7 inches long. Anything smaller than these minimum dimensions will require a jig. The maximum size of a workpiece is limited only by the physical size of the CarveWrite machine and is 14.5 inches wide by 5 inches thick by 12 feet long. Loading a workpiece. Proper installation of the workpiece is critical to the performance and continued operation of the machine. To properly insert a workpiece, first, press down on the sliding guide plate release lever and move the sliding guide plate to the right so that it will clear the width of the workpiece. Use the crank handle to raise the head high enough for easy insertion of the workpiece. Never crank your machine head above the slots on the four guide posts or it may get stuck. See manual on how to get it unstuck. Lay the workpiece on the traction drive so that it is centered lengthwise under the head. 
Place the board firmly up against the squaring plate and on top of the board tracking sensor. Move the sliding guide plate up against the right edge of the workpiece. The sliding guide plate is used to guide the workpiece and is not intended to lock the piece in position. It is critical to ensure the workpiece can travel freely in and out of the machine along its entire length without getting wedged. Test the workpiece by moving it in and out of the machine by hand while it is lying flat on the traction drive. Next, lower the head by turning the head crank handle counterclockwise. Once the correct pressure loading of the head is reached, the clutch will begin to click. Continue to rotate the crank two full turns once the clicking sound is heard to ensure full loading. Failure to correctly load the workpiece by ratcheting the clutch at least two full turns after the clicking begins may result in diminished carving quality. The clutch is intended to load the board against the traction drive with consistent force. In certain cases, the machine can sense if the workpiece is not loaded enough and the LCD display will show please load board. Most often, this decreased loading is caused by insufficient lubrication of the four vertical corner posts or the two vertical lead screws. Please see the lubrication and checking the head pressure instructions under maintenance and care on this DVD or from your owner's manual for detailed information on these procedures. Project Setup Before we can begin carving the project that we designed earlier in this DVD, a number of menu prompts and machine operations must be completed. After selecting which project you want to carve, the machine will move the cutting spindle up and over to the home position. The machine will then ask if the workpiece is to stay under rollers. By selecting Yes, you are choosing to keep the workpiece under the compression rollers. This helps to avoid undesirable lines in the carving called snipe. This occurs if the workpiece moves after coming out from under the rollers. Yes means that it will maintain constant contact with both the board tracking sensor and be held in place by the two compression rollers. If Yes is selected to stay under rollers, the machine will automatically assume that there is a 3 one inch extra length on either side of the project, which means the workpiece or medium that you load into the machine must be at least 7 inches longer than the length of the board you specified in the designer software, or a jig must be used to simulate the longer board. If the board that you insert does not account for this extra length, then the machine will ask you if you want to scale the project or insert another board. It is recommended that you insert the right sized board in this case, because scaling can have some unintended consequences. On our project, we will select Yes, Stay Under Rollers. This is why we need a 19-inch board to complete the 12-inch long project we laid out in the software. The machine will then measure the workpiece with its sensors. If the size of the inserted workpiece does not match the size of the project designed in the software, then the machine will prompt for additional information or action. If one or both of the width and length dimensions measure smaller than the design dimensions, you will be given one of two options. One, scale the project, meaning the project design will automatically be scaled down to fit the workpiece while maintaining the aspect ratio, or two, load new board or workpiece. If, on the other hand, both of the measured dimensions are greater than the designed dimensions, you will be given three options. One, keep original size. Two, scale the project, which scales the project up to the largest size to fit the board without changing the original aspect ratio. Or three, place on end, which places the project on the corner closest to the keypad and toward the back of the machine. If you select Keep Original Size, the machine will ask where to place the project on the workpiece. 1. Center on Board, which centers the project on the workpiece. 2. Jog to Position, 
which allows you to move the project to the location of your choosing using the arrow keys, or 3. Place on end, which places the project on the corner closest to the keypad and toward the back of the machine. In general, it is a good practice to put a board into the machine that is slightly larger than your original design and select Keep Original Size. Be very careful when scaling down a project at the machine. The machine will scale the entire project to the largest size that will fit the workpiece while maintaining the overall aspect ratio of height to width. It will not change the aspect ratio to fit that of the workpiece. Scaling down can also lead to undesirable thinning of the carved elements that may lead to wood chip out. If possible, measure the workpiece to carve before starting the project layout in the software. This will help guide the design and prevent unintended scaling issues if the project design is different than the available workpiece. Again, remember if you choose the Stay Under the Rollers option, you must have an additional 7 inches of length on your workpiece, or you cannot complete the project at full size. Using the Measure function of the machine will provide the most accurate measurement. Once all of the required data has been entered, the machine will prompt you to insert the required bit. It will first tell you which bit to load into the machine based on your project design. Pressing Enter will move the cutting truck to a position in the middle of the machine that offers easy access to load or change the bit. For projects that require more than one bit, the machine will prompt for each bit at that point and will store the calibration settings. Inserting the carved type bits. Inserting your new carved type bits is very fast and easy. The solid carbide cutting and carving bits come pre-assembled with pressed on bushings. These bushings fit easily into the carved tight shaft and the flange sets the depth precisely every time. The steel shank decorative bits will use a universal collet which will fit on any of the bits that you can buy for your carve right. Installing the new bits is as simple as slipping them into the spindle shaft and tightening down the grab foot. Make sure to slide the bit all the way into the shaft such that the flange on the bushing touches the bottom of the shaft. Tighten the screw snugly and you're ready to carve. To remove, carefully place your hand under the bit and loosen the screw. The bit should be loose enough that it will fall right into your hand. All half-inch steel shank decorative bits will also be inserted directly into the spindle shaft. Observe the small rubber stop collet that will set the height of the bit once installed. Quarter-inch steel shank decorative bits will require you to use the universal split collet. Go ahead and slide the split collet onto the shank of the bit down to the stop collar. Insert the colleted decorative bit into the carved tight spindle and tighten down the grab foot. Bit Tip Locator Plate After the bit is properly loaded, the machine will locate the bit by touching it to the swinging locator plate. It will then locate the top surface of the workpiece by touching it with the bit tip, in essence, measuring the thickness of the workpiece. Be sure to observe that the bit is touching the locator plate properly. If the locator plate is not swinging out all the way, it is an indication of excess dust buildup around or under the plate. Clean and lubricate to resolve the issue. The machine will then proceed to carve the project. A carving completion estimator will be displayed on the LCD and provides an estimate of how much of the current carving is completed. This completion estimator gives an estimate for the element that is carving at the time and does not necessarily provide an estimate for the entire project. When the carving is completed, lift the top safety cover, release the head lockdown lever, and crank the head up to free the workpiece. The workpiece can then be removed and examined. After removal from the machine, it is advisable to brush away any whiskers from the carving with a small brass utility brush and to blow it free of dust with compressed air. See the tips and tricks for different finishing techniques.